Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ajawi TV. I'm Ajawi and for today we'll be talking about ways to avoid being overcharged when it comes on to construction. Alright, so without any further ado, let's get into that. All my life I had to fight, I ain't taking no ill, I paid the price. Remember them day we had no lights, now I'm up 2K, I ain't talking no spikes. Just drop me an Ebony. Alright, so you're doing construction, right? As a homeowner, you know, or a small you're constructing your small starter home and you're thinking, okay, you don't want to be overcharged when it comes on to construction. But there are simple ways to avoid these are there are situations in which homeowners themselves actually force themselves to be in overcharge when it comes on to construction. And I basically came up, came up with a few situations that you know you might find yourself being overcharged all right so let's look at those so the first situation is this you decide that you want to do construction right and this is a typical situation you're saying to yourself boy i don't want to um, get overcharged you know i don't want the construction cost to be high and the mistake that most homeowners make is that they don't have a building plan right now when you don't have your building plan you set yourself up to be in overcharge drastically right because you don't know where you're going you can't communicate what you want so therefore you're going to end up overcharging yourself or spending more than you should be spending so that's the that's the typical way that most home are, homeowners end up being overcharged so let's get that out of the way so if you don't have a building plan you're you're off at a bad start from the beginning there's no way that you can know how much you're going to spend there's no way for you to know what your budget looks like or what you should or should not be spending right so let's get that out of the way so let's not even count that because if you don't have a building plan you're, you're at a bad start all right so let's say you have a building plan right you spend your time you you employ a technologist or an architect or an engineer to ensure that your project has a building plan in place it has been approved by the parish council so now you want to con you want to do construction right you don't get a, a bill, bill of quantities done. For from there, you're making the first mistake because, guess what? When you get a little man for come do your construction or for come build your house, right? And he might do a thing. He might just give you some costs. Now, if you had a bill of quantities done, right? You, with your your QS here is the magic of it right you get your bill of quantities done right and you say all right I'm ready for construction you have that document that says okay my house is supposed to cost 10 million dollars to build right it's not very big small decent sized home and you, your home is supposed to cost you 10 million dollars we're just saying you decide to all right this is what the that, this is what it should cost me to build ten million dollars. You take that bill of quantities and you say you select three persons to say, okay, this is the project that I have, right? Um, I want you to bid on my project to build. Remember, you know, you know that it is ten million dollars to build, and you say to your contractor, hey. Um, submit your bid it's a competitive bid so more than one person will be submitting submit it by x date um, to email address x and y your contractor already knows that hey other contractors are bidding so therefore I need to submit a, a price that will put me in a good light your contractor will look at it and say alright him, him get the him estimate done him I'm going to do up an estimate and submit it to you your contractor might say, boy, you know, so I don't want the other guy to win the project over me. 
the, the value of this project look like it is about $10 million. All right. Let me be more competitive. I can cut some costs here, here, and here. All right, I'm willing to do it at $8 million comfortably and still make a profit, right? The other contractor might say, all right, I know say, this is a competitive bid. I have other people bidding with me. So therefore, how much could I build this comfortably for? And he might say, all right, 8.5. This is for a $10 million project. Right? So because you have your bill of quantities and you're now asking multiple contractors to bid on your project, you're now putting yourself in a better position to get better rates. Right? So this is why I've always stressed getting your bill of quantities done and then allowing contractors or different um, professionals or building professionals to bid on your project. Here is how you avoid being overcharged further, right? Your contractor comes in and, say, and you say, all right, you, you contact the contractor that says 8.5 because you believe that, hey, I want quality. The project is valued at $10 million. He can do it at, even though somebody said that they can do it at 8 and another one said that he can do it for 7.5. You're saying to yourself, hmm, the, the one that is too low seems unrealistic, right? The one that's in the middle, he, he might be able to do it, but I kind of want high-end finishes. The one that's saying 8.5, he sounds reasonable because I'm now down um, $1.5 million from the $10 million that I would have spent. So I can look at it comfortably at 8.5. And you call up that contractor. If you do not change anything as it relates to the scope, your contractor has to build your house for 8.5 million because that's the contract that's what he has to do to get the job done and done efficiently right so maybe he instead of um having men working per day he might have him crew come in and say all right this is the project this is what we have to plan in order for us to get this project done at this rate at this price this is what we have to have in place and then your contractor will come in and say all right x y and z boom done you just avoid you just avoided spending 10 million dollars and bump it down to 8.5 just by making sure that you have your building plan done and having your bill of quantities done all right so that's one way to avoid being overcharged now here's the next thing the next the next um situation you have your billing plan done yeah you get a bill of quantities done you have people quote on your project you start construction there is a thing in construction called variation and it is a contractor's best friend i'm not supposed to tell you this i'm eh? <laughs> not supposed to tell you this but you don't know as the regular person right so that's why i'm gonna tell you and that's why this channel I, I decided to do this channel so that people like you can get this information all right so there's a thing called variation in construction and it is a contractor's best friend why it is the point at which the contractor can say yes we can make some extra money right so you come in your contract your contract was supposed to cost you 8.5 million but you come in and you say all right I want an additional room. Or the room is too small. I want it to be a little bit bigger. The room that over there, sir, it's too small. Push it a little bit bigger. Right? The material at this position. Uh, I rather that finish than this one that we had originally agreed on. Your contractor is going to say to you, okay, no problem. 
we'll adjust the budget and we'll ensure that you have it right and go ahead and come to you and say hey this is what it cost re, 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 and you're like okay go ahead your contractor is like yes that's nice I like variations because that's where I can make my money because I don't tie in at 8.5 but now you're adding to the scope which means that I can then send you a new bill for additional things right so now my rates are going to be very nice so that I can make back my money so that's why I've always tell people Get your building plan done, sit down, if you're not comfortable from the get-go, you know, speak with your, your, your technologist, speak with your architect, speak with your engineer, speak, communicate these things in the initial design stage, so that when you reach actual construction stage, you don't have anything to change, because those changes are going to attract additional cost that you might end up even spending over the $10 million, right? Because now you're in a situation where the contractor can say, okay, this item I'm gonna need 10 person to do it. So therefore, I'm gonna charge X and my markup is Y. So therefore my cost is going to be this. Plus I need profit from this and I'm ensuring that I'm going to make my, my maximum profit. So therefore this is the cost you now end up going over $10 million when you started out with, with 8.5, right? So that's another way that you might, be, might end up in a situation where you're overcharged or you're causing yourself to be overcharged during construction, right? Simply because you're making changes to what you initially requested. All right, so we get past that, right? You never make no change and everything will go on good. Here is the thing. Let's say, let's look at it from the flip side. You need, you never get your plan done or you even say you get your plan done and you decide to say, you're not going to use a contractor, you're going to use a little man, right? And you're going to pay him per day. I've seen this multiple times. There's a thing where workmen go slow. Right, you are paid the workman for, for the day. You call him over and say, Hey, may have some days' work, about three days' worth of work, make a pay you X amount of X amount per day. Right? Now the workman come in and on for the first day may go hard. Right? He may go hard for the first day. You initially thought that hey, this is supposed to take three days for do. Right? And you realize that wait, it takes five days for the and he's still not finished. That's because he's going slow. Even though he can do the job efficiently, quickly, nobody's going to want to, to um get the job done quickly when he knows that it's a day's work or per day work. Right? He's not gonna want to give up that little income way again. So he might give you excuse to say, alright, you know. This job was supposed to be three days in about it take long. And based on the workload, or where, or you can see it, you know, you have to do something in a bossy. Look at this situation. I I have some guys, right, on a site. And we say, alright, may I pay two five per day? Just a mixed concrete, and um, you have another one where a broke wall with a hilti, right? And so we have paid the hilti man two five. No, I think it was more than that, about three five for the day for just you know use a hilti for knock down some walls and stuff like that. And watch him the first day, right? My go on well for the first day. Man, knock out him, he might he he do him thing. Second day, him come. Him finish one wall, you know. Second day, him come. Him, 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 him knock out another wall. Now, the third day, him come, him realize, boy, he might done the work too quick. 
And whether I'm doing it quick or I'm doing it fast or I'm doing it, doing it slow, it's the same money I get. So I'm start go slow. Because I want to finish the week. So I want to get the whole full um, week worth of work out of it, right? So call 3515. Right? So I'm say, alright, I'm going to go slow. So the first, the, 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 the third day, I realize, say, oh, I'm going to go slow. Alright, cool, no problem. The next day, I come and say, yo, charge it. We are, we are, we are changing you now. Put in the money. And the youth, the, youth, the new youth now, him come and say, alright, boom. And him knock down the rest of it in a day. You see, you have to be watching these guys. So when you, you as a homeowner now have your site and you say, you nah, you somebody who actually have a budget for them to work with him, right? Or a contractor. You don't have that in place where whether them go slow or in go fast is the same money them I get. Because remember, you know, your contractor said that he will build your building for 8.5 million. If he might take long, I might take quick. I might do it quick. It's the same 8.5 million. Right? So, him come and him say, alright, 8.5, and we are doing it in a. In a three months right he already have in mind that okay this is what i'm going to do to get it done within three months but if him come on him say boy him can't do it in a three months in a six months you already agreed at 8.5 so therefore you don't necessarily worry about how i'm gonna get it done you want the work done right so that's that's how you might be getting overcharged during construction by these simple little things right simply not getting a building plan done simply not getting a bill of quantities done simply not asking more than one contractors to bid on your project to see okay which one of these contractors will i use to do my construction or even simply not having um a contractor at all and then relying on yourself and saying, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna get a man to come do some days work and get it done. You simply put yourself in that position, right? Another way, this is a bonus way that you can actually, um, let us say, avoid being overcharged during construction is this. If you are having a, um, somebody do your construction, right? You don't want to be in a position, for me personally, the client should not be the one to go and buy material. If you don't know that, it's, it's a big problem for you as the client, right? Because guess what? Contractors get better rates than you. You're coming in, right? And you're buying material one off so therefore whatever discount you can possibly get is is mine now when a contractor comes to buy a material buy a material he has been buying material regularly so your hardware your manufacturers love contractors because they are bringing more money to them so therefore they're gonna get better right the contractor is going to get better rates than you now what you can do to follow this is have your BQ so that, well, have them bid so that they know, they themselves know that, hey, I, I have a budget that I'm working with. This is the budget, right? Now, when you decide as a homeowner that you're going to go and buy a material, you're not going to get the rate that the contractor would get, one, and two, it's going to frustrate you, man. You're not only losing money, you're losing time as well. Right? So, I would say, let your contractors um, handle the purchasing of materials, but with caution. Right? Because you have a budget, and that budget has to be followed closely. So, therefore, 
you can ask for receipts if you want so that you know that hey they can't come to you and say hey this is a variation because you wanted x um materials to be used and this is the ma this is material the price has changed over time based on what you have requested from the time period um since you requested it the, the quotation until now right so you can say hey um provide me with the receipts whenever you're making purchases so that i can you know follow along or your your contractor might you can ask your contractor to ensure that hey we set a budget you know working within the budget right and you can then inspect the material whatever he's using so if you go buy mediocre material you know that hey this is not acceptable according to the, the drawings so you see you see where you know you can avoid being charged or overcharged right so anyways thanks for watching thanks for liking thanks for sharing i really appreciate you guys um i appreciate your comments uh, i'm really uh wait i say i'm really appreciating your comment your comments i'm appreciating the feedback that i'm getting all right so keep them coming i really appreciate it um uh, thanks for your subscribe thanks for your share share it with a friend all right i'll see you next time